Hi, it's Chantelle from Fiberific here. Time is never really our friend, is it? We always seem to be battling and running from one thing to the next. Well, I'm no different. With me being off sick for quite a while, I have gotten really, really behind in my dying for upcoming events. So what I thought I'd do today is let you come on my journey of testing out a new base that I've just gotten in. So this is a gorgeous 70% baby alpaca, 30% silk. Um, I'm doing some test dyeing on it today just to see how it goes. I've just got a sample amount to give it a run at the Intercraft in Brisbane on the 23rd, I believe, 23rd of March through to the 26th of March. So let's go on this journey together. The first thing that we need to do when we're going to dye yarn is to soak it. It needs, to, for the particular dyes that I use, it needs to be a slightly um, acidic base, otherwise the dye won't set. And if the dye doesn't set, it's a nightmare for everybody, isn't it? So we need to make sure that our dye sets and does everything it's supposed to do. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is soak our yarn. So I've got a bowl here. You can't see it, but I have a bowl. It's just filled with some warm water. I'm just going to move the camera around so that you can see what I'm working on. We're going to start by opening our skeins out, like so. And then attaching just a piece of cotton tie. I make these just out of standard cotton that I use from um, Spotlight, wherever, cheap cotton that I've bought for other projects. I just tighten a knot. Now the reason I do this is purely, so I've got something to hold on to that's not my actual yarn and that I can get it under the water when I'm dyeing it. So then we just pop in, I've just got a little bit of the Namaste Farms wash and dye unscented, wash it dye unscented. Give it a bit of a shush, just helps to create a base that will want to take yarn. So this base has the 70% baby alpaca and the 30% silk. It's going to need to soak for a goodly time. I would leave it in here for about 30 minutes and then we will go on to mixing our dye. So while our yarn is having its little warm bath, it needs to do this for about 30 minutes, which we're not going to sit around and waste. Uh, what you need to be making sure you're doing is that you've got your safety gear, you've got some gloves, you've got a breathing mask if you're going to be using your dry powder dye. I've already mixed my dye into its liquid form so I won't worry about a breathing mask for this particular round. You can check it out on Instagram, my breathing mask is stunning. Um, so at the moment this dye is at its full strength. I want a really soft pale eggshell blue so I'm really really going to water it down. So I've got just a, a cup and a pipette just to play with. I also have on the stove right now a saucepan with about that much water. So what's that? That's about two, an inch and a half, two inches deep of water. It just needs to barely cover the yarn. I want to make it a eggshell blue with a kind of semi-solid look, um, if that makes sense. That's what we're aiming for. We'll see what we get. Uh, so the saucepan's nearly ready. I will also sprinkle into the saucepan about a tablespoon of citric acid. I really want to boost the color intake. My dye mix includes the dye, hot water to mix the water, mix the actual powder, vinegar, then topped up with cold water so it's ready to use. Um, but with your dyes, just follow the instructions on the packaging. Those instructions are there for a reason. They have been tried and tried and tried and tested. And the thing to do is to make it to the full strength and then use smaller amounts diluted or mixed with other colors, however you like. Or at least that's a good place to start. Once you're used to dyeing, you can do whatever you want. It's one of those things, learn the rules to break the rules. So I'm going to try and see if we can get this camera over the saucepan and we will start dyeing. Now, as you can see, this water is not crazy boiling. It's just, I don't know if you can see, it's just starting to steam up. And so now it's hot enough. We want, we don't want to boil our yarn. We just want it to sort of simmer. So I'm just going to turn the heat right down for a second. 
Now, I'm gonna, and I've also diluted my dye right down. So it might be a little too diluted for this. So I'm just going to fill it in. Now, the thing to remember with these chemical dyes is that whatever you are using, be it the, so the saucepan, the spoon, whatever you use can never be used for food again. Once it has been used for chemical dyeing, it's done. Now, all I've done to the yarn since you last saw it was emptied out and just give it a bit of a scrunch. So now I'm going to lay it here. There's our little tie that we made so we can grab it. So see how it's already changing to the really pretty pale blue. And then we just, I do want to make it a little bit of a semi-solid. So I just want to put in just a few more splotches in some random places, just using, oops, you can't see it, but the pipette and the cup of dye, just some extra bits, just to give us some darker little sections. I'm not sure if you can see what I'm doing here. I'll put some here. Now obviously I would normally do things on a much larger scale with a lot more colour at any one time and also a lot more yarn. But when I'm testing out a base I like to do it just a one on one. See how it takes the dye, all yarn blends take dye a different way. Um, you know just because you've got a tried and true recipe for say a pure merino doesn't mean it's going to work with a or, or, or I should say shouldn't it's not going to work the same way with the silk and alpaca blend so that's going to look really pretty I'm hoping it's not going to be too dark this will now need to sit in the saucepan I'll pop its lid on so the yarn is in the saucepan and it will need to stay there for about sort of 30 minutes to heat set then what I'll do is I'll just give it a little ring out and let it dry and I'll show you some photos when it's all done. Thanks so much for coming on this journey. If you've liked this video, click the like button. If you haven't subscribed already, click the subscribe button. And if you want to make sure you're not missing any of these videos, make sure you tick the little bell icon and choose a way to be notified when a new video is up. Every Tuesday I try and make a tutorial video and on Thursdays I make just a little quick information video and we call them Thursday quickies, generally under five minutes. It's time for you to fill your universe with fibre fun. Off you go, I'll see you next time. Bye!